Hello guys and welcome back to another Amp Creator tutorial. Today what we're going to do is take a look at a generic item. Ah, uh, no, 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 not that kind of generic item. Take your hand off of that back button. So what I'm talking about is that kind of generic item. A item, but not a item. It's a kind of a different item per se. It's a generic item with the name generic item, but it also has some functionality other than just being a generic item. like. It has an inventory screen and we can actually take the name from the generic item and type something out like something and set the name and it will change it to something or we could also change it to purple and we can set it purple and now it will be purple so yeah, I'm going to show you guys how to do that today. It's a little more advanced script, but it's actually really simple to set up and I learned how to do that over the weekend. So we will be doing that today. But before we go, let's just uh, get rid of some of these things right here and we'll be able to continue now. All right. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at the different types of things that we have in here. There's three procedures and two are buttons and then there is the GUI and the item. We'll take a look at the item first and everything is the same except for we're basically just assigning a procedure when item or when right clicked in air with provided item and then what we're doing with that is we're just opening the GUI. So if we go to here as you can see we're opening the GUI to do that go to player procedures scroll down until you see this one right here open screen for provided entity Pass location XYZ and then the GUI name. So this is the GUI that you're going to want to open is for the GUI that we're going to show in just a second. So with that, we have a GUI set up with one text field and two buttons. You only need really one button to name something, but if you want color codes, you're going to need buttons for each one of those color codes. Our text field name is important. Our text input name, which is the basically the ID for the text field itself. This has to be unique. It'll be useful to have when you're calling it in a procedure. So make sure it's something easy to remember. You might want to also put a ID for it for your mod above or before it. So something like CC TV craft or something like that. And then you could have your text field name after that. That seems to work fine. And then the internal name is just the display name for the actual text field when it's not filled out. The other two buttons are just having procedures that when it's clicked, it goes to the respective buttons procedures that we have made. So the set name or set name, which is our generic renaming one, it goes to generic item button and the purple one goes to generic color button. So let's go take a look at the button script. So if we click on generic item button, we're gonna see what we have here. This is just a basic script. Now we already know that the, the player is right clicking with the item, so it has to be in the main hand in order to right click on it. We have the item in main hand, and then what we're doing is we're testing if for the text field name. Now with the text field name, this has to be the internal, not the internal, the actual ID for the text field. And this has to be where we're selecting for the item and then we're just setting the display name. So in order to do that, we need to go to item procedures, scroll down a little bit until we see set display name of provided item stack to display name. So we're gonna grab this block right here and we wanna get rid of both of the elements on the inside. Next, what we want to do is go to item data, scroll down until we see item in main hand, and we're going to drop that into our, our item selecting slot. And then this will test for the item in the main hand. After that, what we need to do is go to slot and GUI procedures and grab a get text inside text field and then the text field name. So we're going to drop that right over here. And then what we need to do is fill out this little section right here with our same ID for our from our text field. So after you've done that, you have something like this. Now let's take a quick look at the color code for the buttons. We'll go in here and as you can see, we have a little bit of a different script. We actually have two new elements to our main thing. Now before we had just a text field name like this, 
but now we have two extra things. So let's take a look how this is all set up. First, we need to create text with, and then we're gonna grab that from the text tab. And then we need an actual text element. So we're gonna go back and then we're gonna grab one and place that right here. After you've done that, make sure you just move your text field name over to this part right here. And all we need to do now is assign the color code for that text item. Now you could also technically do a variable based system and then call certain things, but you're still going to have to select somehow the text from another text field for them to change the color field. I'll explain how to do that more in a, lar a more advanced video. It's something I want to take the time and make sure that it's done properly. Right now it's most important just to basically show you the basics of it. For now, what you want to do is create a button for each color code if you, depending on what color code you want. And you can get the color codes from Minecraft Gamepedia formatting codes and then the IDs are right on the code section right here. All that right on the first line is the color codes. So we had the sign for the color code with five, that's purple. And then we're just gonna paste that right into the text box that we've assigned and then drop that right in there. And that's all there is to it. After you've done that, you're ready to go and you can just save it and basically allow people to change the text of an item. In the next tutorial, I'll be teaching you how to basically take this system and get user input for the actual color code so we can basically make a dynamic color code for rather than assigning buttons for every color code. So we'll be adapting the system to better suit color code support. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.